why, why do you have to go to college to be an organic farmer? Can't I just get a, you know, pickup truck and a tie-dye t-shirt? Well, not if you want to understand the science behind it. And that's really where my interests and my, my expertise come in. Because if we're really interested in sustainability, we want to know what makes a farm or a farming system sustainable. We're not just interested in labels. Is this organic? Is this, you know, not organic? We're interested in the processes that make it sustainable. Hello, my name is Jennifer Reeve. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Plant Soils and Climate. Uh, my area of research is organic and sustainable farming systems. I'm a soil scientist by training, but um, all my graduate and subsequent research has been involved in organic agriculture and farming systems in general and uh, looking at how soil quality uh, changes between different kinds of farming practices. The question I'm often asked is, what is organic farming? Well, as it's most fundamental, organic farming is based on the substitution of cultural inputs versus synthetic inputs. So cultural inputs could be uh, human labor, as well as crop rotations and organic or natural forms of fertilizer. Maybe you've heard the term feed the soil and not the plants. Now that's, that's one of these uh, phrases that you hear organic farmers talk about a lot. Feed the soil, not the plants. And so that's why, you know, understanding why feeding the soil is so important, that's where my expertise as a soil scientist comes into this, this picture. Uh, so we need to be able to study nutrient cycling and um, microbial dynamics and how all that links together to produce a beautiful crop using minimal external inputs. We're trying to generate that fertility within the system. The big picture then is really trying to take what works best about organic farming and applying that to agriculture in general to make, try and make farming more sustainable. Here in the United States, uh, we have the option to farm organically or not. Uh, Fertilizers, all sorts of inputs are very readily available here, but that's not the case in other parts of the world. Uh, in many parts of Africa, for example, uh, Mount Gorongosa, where I've been working, they don't have access to fertilizer. Uh, it's just not available, and even if it was available, uh, the chances are they couldn't afford it because their markets are very local and very, very small. So they're just producing a few tomatoes, for example, to sell at the local market and, and that's their only income and they need that money to buy shoes for their kids you know they can't spend that on fertilizer and so those people don't have the option uh, they have to be organic <music>